اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم is the difference between theoretical and conceptual framework in today's lecture initially we'll focus on what is theoretical framework what is conceptual framework so the contents for today's session are so whether or not theoretical and conceptual frameworks are conceptual silhouettes or they refer to different constructs although generally a lot of literature uses these two terms interchangeably suggesting that they are conceptually equivalent in this session we will focus on this debate and see how they may be different similar or complementary so let's start theoretical and conceptual framework it is obviously near controversial to state that three people coming from different walks of life watching the same event are likely to come up with different interpretation of the event. Certainly depending on the spectacles, each one of them is very in viewing the event, they each have different view of the event. For example, we see poverty all around us. A student of sociology will have a different take on why there is poverty. A student of psychology will have a different take on why there is poverty. An economist will have a totally different take as to why there is poverty. An educationist will have a totally different viewpoint as to why there is poverty. A person who, who might not have visited any university, any educational establishment, he is an illiterate or she is an illiterate, will have a completely different viewpoint. So it's completely normal to have a different viewpoints with respect to a certain spectacle or a certain event. It is important to note that each person's viewpoint or point of reference is her or his conceptual or theoretical framework. So the viewpoint or point of reference is our conceptual or theoretical framework. So the way we view things is actually referred to as our conceptual or theoretical framework. Now in essence, the conceptual or theoretical framework is the soul of every research project. It determines how a given researcher formulates his or her research problem and how he or she goes about investigating the problem and what meaning she or he attaches to the data Echoing from such an investigation. It's important that we understand that the conceptual or theoretical framework is actually the soul of our research. It not only helps you formulate your research problem, but it also helps you in understanding how will you investigate the problem and what particular meaning do you attach to the variables or constructs in your study. So it provides a total guiding line as to how the investigation should be carried out in order to solve a particular problem. Now, focusing on theoretical framework. A theoretical framework refers to the theory that a researcher chooses to guide him or her in his or her research. Now, if we focus on this definition, it says this is one opinion uh, by one author. It says, it says that a theoretical framework refers to the theory, not theories. It's referring, referring to theory, not theories. So a single theory. So a theoretical framework is the application of a theory or a set of concepts drawn from one and the same theory to offer an explanation of an event or shed some light on a particular phenomena or research purpose. This could refer to, for instance, the job demand and resources model that could be applied to a given research problem deducted. So when you are using a single theory and you are drawing concepts from that particular theory, what you are doing is you are actually using a theoretical framework. This is one opinion that is available in the literature. 
On the other hand, a researcher may find that his her research problem cannot meaningfully be researched in reference to only one theory or concepts resident within one theory. In such cases, the researcher may have to synthesize the existing views in the literature concerning a given situation both theoretical and from empirical findings. So one theory might not be in length. We might have to focus on different concepts. And those different concepts might come from different theories or different empirical research. In this case, what you are doing is you are building a conceptual framework. Where concepts, uh, where concepts are going from theories and empirical findings. So the, syn so the synthesis may be called a model or conceptual framework, which essentially represents an integrated way of looking at the problem. Such a model could then be used in place of a theoretical framework. So if you build one theory, that's theoretical framework. If you build multiple theories, and other empirical studies from which we are drawing in concepts and then developing a model that's that can be referred to as a conceptual framework. Now the process of arriving at a conceptual framework is similar akin to an inductive process, whereby small individual pieces, in this case the concepts, are joined together to get a bigger map of possible relationship. Thus, a conceptual framework is derived from concepts insofar as theoretical concepts framework is derived from a theory. So according to this perception, theoretical framework flows from one single theory, whereas conceptual framework is derived from concepts that may come from different theories. So that's one point of view that is actually followed in research and this is obviously not wrong. Now theoretical framework in a study is based on an existing theory or theory. So this is another for example, a theory of motivation. A conceptual framework, on other hand, is something you can develop yourself based on the theory. So this is another viewpoint. The theoretical framework may not be just based on one single theory. It could be based on multiple theories. A conceptual framework actually flows from a theoretical framework. A theoretical framework can have multiple theories. A conceptual framework emerges from concepts drawn from ad adapted theories and empirical studies. So your conceptual framework actually emerges from different theories and empirical studies. For instance, you might be using knowledge-based view, stakeholder theory, LMX theory, or resource-based theory to draw your concepts. You might draw concepts for example, knowledge management processes from, for instance, knowledge based view, stakeholder theory, a Linux theory, or resource based theory. You might draw concepts from each one of them. You might draw knowledge management processes from knowledge based view. You might draw communication or corporate social responsibility from stakeholder theory. You might draw leadership from LMX theory. You might draw organizational performance from resource based theory. Combine all of these concepts that are flowing from these theories and develop your own conceptual framework. This, this, it is important to know that these both concepts of theoretical framework and conceptual framework are actually complementary to each other. Theoretical framework is more general, top, while conceptual framework is more specific. The conceptual framework presents an overall structure of the study and the theoretical framework within it explains the relationship that are explored within the study. So what happens is, you cannot arrive at a conceptual framework unless or until you have got a theoretical framework. So what leads to a conceptual framework is the theoretical framework within the study. So if you've got theoretical framework, or multiple theories that will help you reach your conceptual framework. So what happens is, within a conceptual framework, there are different theoretical frameworks. How? Let's... Let, we'll, we'll be focusing on that in a minute. Now, Revit and Riggins define conceptual framework as... How they define conceptual framework? This is important. 
an argument about why the topic one wishes to study matters, why a particular topic is important. So conceptual failure is about the reasoning. It's about giving a rigor to your study. It's about identifying why studying a particular topic is is important. Why is why is it worthwhile to study a particular topic? For example, a conceptual framework for a study on learning styles would present the reasons why studying this particular aspect of learning styles is important. So conceptual framework would actually identify why learning styles is important. With that reason rooted in the literature, obviously you cannot say that okay, this is why I think learning styles are important. You have to defend your eye with literature. Now, for whom studying the particular aspect of learning style might make a difference? Why would it make a difference? What are your contribution to the literature? So, when you are identifying a conceptual framework. One of the strongest aspects of that conceptual framework is identification of theory, sorry, contribution to existing theory. Furthermore, differentiating between conceptual and theoretical frameworks, conceiving theoretical framework as an explanation of how a study relates to the generation or testing of the theory. So, theoretical framework is actually a chance to explain your conceptual framework. Now, building on Rappi and Riggins 2017, theoretical framework can be defined as an element of a conceptual framework. This is what we refer to as earlier. So, what your theoretical framework does is it helps you explain your conceptual framework. Without any theoretical framework, you cannot explain why there is a conceptual framework. So, theoretical framework is a critical element of your conceptual framework. That situates the relationships explored. So, in a conceptual framework, you can have multiple relationships. Now, each of those relationships might be explained in light of a particular theoretical framework or in light of a particular theory. Now, here are a few examples. As a whole, you can see corporate social responsibility, team outcomes, and organizational performance is your conceptual framework. However, when you look into the impact of CSR on team outcomes, this is explained in light of social identity theory. And the impact of CSR on organizational performance is evaluated or assessed in light of resource-based view. So, when you are studying CSR and team outcomes in light of social identity theory, this is your theoretical framework. So, what you can say is that in this particular or in, the, in this particular model, conceptual model, conceptual framework, there are two different theoretical frameworks. One explaining CSR and team outcomes in light of social identity theory. The other explaining CSR and organizational performance in light of resource-based theory. So, you cannot explain this conceptual, frame, conceptual framework unless or until you identify and understand the theoretical framework within these or within this conceptual framework. Another example, this is another conceptual model or conceptual framework. In this case, CSR and service quality is explained in light of stakeholder theory. So, CSR and service quality explained in light of stakeholder theory. CSR, corporate image and corporate reputation explained in light of signaling theory. CSR and loyalty explained in light of social identity theory. Now, this is how you can differentiate between conceptual and theoretical things. You can see, yes, they are different, obviously, but they are complementary to each other. They, they are necessary for each other. Without one, you cannot explain the other. So, you cannot explain your conceptual framework unless or until you understand the theoretical framework within your conceptual framework. Thank you.